Best of Bordeaux, bravely in the lead from Cool and Gatter. Coming through is Fireburn with a big run off the fence, and Fireburn charges home and gives Gary Portelli his second golden sliver. Welcome to Met Doctor Behind the Curtain. Look at how pro punters operate. I'm your host, Scoot. I've got Johnny Walter up and about in studio. Fresh, oh, mate. Fresh, fresh. You fresh, look fresh. Yeah, four hours, four hours sleep. I'm fresh. Yeah. I can't do it anymore. I'm gone. DK uh, is up and about. He's back in the winning circle, and he's got Nico in the Melbourne studio. How are you, DK? Nothing like a winner to get you up and going, Scooty, especially the way that thing won. But uh, well, summer's over down here. We, you, know, you boys up there probably in the nice weather, but a bit, bit, a bit balmy down here this morning, isn't it, Nico? Trackies are on. Trackies are morning. on. Hoodies are on. Yeah, no, no good to uh, the punters this morning, but hopefully a big weekend this weekend. Uh, yeah, like you said, you get, I, I had a bit of a tough one last Saturday, just managed to back a plethora of seconds, so hopefully you can uh, bounce back this week in uh, the Valley into Mornington. Seems a good little double for the punters. Mm, it's a much, much been made of the All-Star Mile. Everyone's uh, bagging, I guess, the speed in the race. Saki, you found it on the show, so the listeners and viewers uh, at home would have uh, anchored that one. He timed it very well, didn't he? Jumped off Thunderstruck that went mm. like a rocket and, and found the winner with confidence and it, it got the run that he probably thought it would get and, and won like he said it would win, but it was a good run the second horse. Yeah, it was a great run the second horse. It looks uh, hard to beat uh, next time it steps up. But, uh, yeah, it maybe fell a bit flat, the All-Star Mile for mine. It might need something to spice it up. I think, well, I don't know, maybe two months ago we said it should be a handicap and, I'd probably share the same sort of view. It needs, it needs for about twenty different reasons. It needs to be a handicap. Yeah, mm. we just don't have the stock. Do it's we? the spirit of the race. It's like yeah. an invitational big mile. It's just perfect race to be a handicap. If it is a handicap, do you get a horse like Zaki, or does he just stay to the wait for age path? Like it is the all sum mile. If it's a handicap, we're not going to get anything. Do you the want prize, a race? Do you the want prize a money. Like yeah, I yeah, don't the know. Prize what, what's gonna the prize money going to be there? About? Yeah, depends what you want the race to be about. If you want it to be a wait for age race, make it a wait for age race and. You know, I don't know, and time it differently probably, but um, yeah, I just otherwise you're just going to get races like that, like one or two wait for age horses that can dominate because they can, you know, just outclass them. For for Buzz, the Everest has got it cold. Oh, yeah, no comparison. It was just another race for like well, I know I'm a Sydney person, but it wasn't a race that I only wanted to watch it because you know probably Zaki and thing it was just but it was just another race it didn't have like, I agree like I was there I've been to all of them and like comparing it to last year where you had you know Russian Camelot Mugger to at the valley I know it's a bit of a different atmosphere but it felt like a Cox plate last year it had that sort of feel about it mm. Flemington it just fell flat so whether that was because you know a big horse like Zaki one who no one really gets behind compared to say a Mystic Journey one of a few years ago and all well, Tasmania mm. was cheering her on I don't really know but um I think as a not even as just a race, as an event, which is what they want it to be, it might need some work for sure. If you can get people to target it like a Doncaster, add in the, the cold. social element of, There'll be a, a cold of element. Informa- invitational, like uh, getting people behind horses leading up, you know, it is, it's like a, a, an Everest for the people then, isn't it? Mm. And uh, the, the people's punter, he was uh, back in the winner's circle at Yarra Valley and uh, beware the wag, this is some run, DK. Talk us through this one. Miss the kick. Uh, it's in the bulldog. Yes, it's good. Can't here, back a winner. But, uh, I can't back a winner, and we're down to this. And there it is in the bulldog colours out the back in a twelve hundred metre race around Yarra Valley. What was going through your head here when it misses well, the start at oh, Yarra Valley? Thick. Oh, and then he jams it as well just to really rub it in. And then yeah. he he doesn't stop riding its ears off. And I I sort of knew they'd run along a bit. That's why I sort of thought, oh, at least it's some chance. Doesn't stop niggling. Doesn't stop niggling. And then it starts sucking up on the inside and getting within range. And then I start thinking, oh, you know, there's a little chance here. And then when it comes around the... Not here, you don't. No, Jesus not here, Christ, not here. Have a look at it. Uh, still, still hard at it. Like, and I'm just thinking, you know, I thought all we're right, off. we're off, you know. $8 into three eighty or whatever it was, this is good. Then here, it just thought, oh, you're getting up on the inside here. And that um, then it starts laying out around the turn and throws away all that ground that it made up on the inside. And here, about here, well, I'm thinking, oh, off ski, off ski. And then... Uh, Jesus, uh, I don't want to... Nah, no, especially around Yarra Valley, it's a two hundred metre straight. And then um, mm. Mick Mick D Mick D said it still off. Mick D said right now, he said it didn't want to, it didn't know what it was doing the whole race. The last hundred when it had to be a racehorse, it charged through the gap and got the chocolates. And oh, geez, that was exciting. That was way more exciting for me than the All Star Mile or anything like that. That was. Um... I still don't want to be on it. <laughs> <laughs> How's it? I, I'm I'm just still confused. How did it win? I just don't yeah, know how what, it won. And what is it? Yeah, like was it? <laughs> how was the race okay, or was it just? Uh, did it find the right race? Or it was. A, it was, it was on day. It was race a, was any good? It's a nice. Horse. It was a first starter, and if you look after the line, like it was, might it was accepted at fourteen hundred at Kyneton, and then they decided to run it at twelve. 
So that was one of the negatives and concerns. And I thought, oh, well, I'll run along here. So it'll set it up for something to come over the top. So that all sort of worked out. I just did not think it would work out like that. But if you look after mm. the line, it's five links in front. Um, but Mick D, as soon as the guy said, oh, Mick, Mick D, tell us about that, he said, that was weird. He said it mm. didn't know what it was doing from the moment it left the gates till the 100-metre mark, and then when it had to take a tight gap and bash its way through, it wanted, wanted to be a racehorse. So, um, was it Paddy's you know, or Williams? Good that's the, uh, yeah, Alan and Jason right. Williams, which, I mean, like, they've had a couple. Like, they, they give them these for David Price. That, that, that's going, obviously, trying to get to Hong Kong, that horse. But they give them eight trials or six trials. They gave it four or five trials, and they give it to them to, you know, teach them how to be a racehorse, and then they get to the races and they do that. I've got no idea what they're doing. So it just shows you. That's why I, I'm not big on first starters. It, but when you get $8, that, that was worth a, or six, was a, I think it was a little deduction or something, but it was worth the spec. But, um, oh, geez, that was exciting. Like, you know, I've sort of been struggling on the back of winter and I've never had more horses in the stewards reports for poor performance queried ever in a, in the, on the run. You know, every time I go on the stewards reports, I want the stewards, why is it gone so shit house? And then that thing misses the start. So, but anyway. So hopefully uh, we're up and about and we've got, hopefully we're back to a nice horse at Albury today and we can put two together. I think uh, it's a big turning point. That was just, uh, one of the weirdest things I saw all weekend. But another weird thing that I saw on the weekend yeah. was uh, a horse from the uh, the Wallace Stable. Which no, one? No compromise. Which one? Oh, I didn't see the race. What you happened? You didn't see the race. I didn't see okay, the race. Okay, so happened? what we've done is we're going to clip up no, got, well, the last Well, it can't be that exciting because he's a get-back grinding home type that no. doesn't do a lot early. So it must all happen late in the race. Does it? Okay, yeah. let's let's go to the tape. So we're going to jog yeah. back three starts here, and we'll uh, we'll see this horse. No compromise. I think uh, the viewers at home will see that Waltz tipped this up. So this was uh, three starts ago at uh, over nineteen hundred meters. So there it is in the uh, the blue with the pink spots. It's, uh, it's jumped, I guess. I think he's still restraining. Barely. Yeah, just hang on. Yeah, still restraining. Dead last. So that's uh, that's one of them. Here's the next one. Jumps, jump, jump well, jumps well jump there right. too. Yeah. Jumps well there, and then just uh, drags it right back. Doesn't have eyes for the front though, does he? Really? Mm. I think this is the day we were on, and you can see. I think what's that? Knight's order bowling along in front, and then uh, where they're genuine coffin, well out of the race, sixteen, 16 lengths, lengths yeah. off the yeah. off the lead. Yeah. So it's definitely a back marker, I'd say. Uh, looking at this, looks like it. Looks like a genuine back marker. This horse, no compromise, and now. Saturday just gone. Bang, there it is. Bangs out of the gates. And there it is in the first five runners there. It's going to slot in two or three pairs back. Tries to get in. It's three wide now. And it's interesting because you can't, you only get to see this shot. So there's only a, the steward's vision and then you've got this chopper shot. So it's it's strange. Sometimes at Randwick you get um, good angles and then it's just a chopper shot at uh, Rose Hill here. Now it's three wide punching. This, this horse is absolutely motoring. And it's probably about 12 lengths closer than I'd anticipated, and, and you probably mapped the it. And there's been, yeah. and it, the bee in the bonnet, and the sticky point is we. After the race, I went back through the stewards' uh, Twitter Twitter handle to see if there was any change of tactics or any mention of what's happening because we usually know how um, the stable operate. And here it is, still outside the leader here, just absolutely bolting, and they just can't run it down. I think the things that are annoying, I don't think there was any intention to go forward, to be honest. After, like, in with jokes aside, I've looked at it about 20 times. He dead set, did jump into the bridle. He's then tried to find cover. The horse couldn't get there. And it's then ended up having rolling up. It's like, they're going quick. It sits outside the leader. They go 10 above. It fights them off and wins. You know, I don't think that second horse was ever going to go past it. It's the biggest win of all time. Mm. So there's a lot of reasons it's highly frustrating. The thing that annoys you the most is because... You become reliant on a change of tactics for a horse like this so much, you would have expected it nowhere else but dragged out of the race and last. And, last. and I don't think there's anything gone on with from the stable there, as in like a betting plunge or anything. But it's just so smelly as a punter because you just you just expect that's a, like a 15 length difference from one start mm. to the other. You just expect that horse to be going around having another barrier trial for the Sydney Cup. You don't take it seriously. If it wins, you expect it to be, you know, having to take inside runs, make up 12 lengths and win, not sit outside leader. So it's, I don't think there's anything dodgy at all in a, in a million years from the stable there. It just highlights how uh, the rule is um, very Useless. frustrating because it, there's no real upside to punters because nine times out of the 10, it's going to cause frustration more than the one time it's going to be informative. 
Mm. Well, if I was a steward, I'd be looking at the last the, the two starts prior mm. where it got hooked back, and I'd be going through the betting records mm. to, like the last two starts, and then I wouldn't be worrying so much about what's just happened on the weekend. Mm. So it's more when it's sort of it doesn't appear to be, um, I guess, trying all that much. And getting sort of snicked back, as a lot of people in the media say. So I think the, the yeah, it's not a horse that's like jammed out and got yeah. no speed. Mm. Yeah, it's 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 forcibly been restrained twice. Twice. That's when I've shown at. there that it's got the speed to sit outside lead on a you know a high pressure uh, race. So it's um it's just yeah it's it's more a highlight of the rule, not that isolation incident, and it, it's um Ra- just racing, frustrating as well. Racing New South Wales put out speed maps, and then jockeys look at it, and then I, I think it just grazed jockeys up, and these. They sort of have to be forced into like a one way of thinking. If you if you abolish the change of tactics rule, more horses that jump naturally forward would put more pressure into the race, and I think you'd see faster tempos and less sort of jig jog or we call them doom de doom sort of mm. races or slow run races. And at least the jockey can then try and put the horse into the race mm. more more often because everyone knows if a horse settles more forward, they're more likely to win the race. It's not rocket yes, science. They cry, even though a lot of stables don't like doing it, but. To me, that sort of rule, everyone has to disclose their tactics and say, okay, I tick off where I, where you think I'm going to be or none. There, mm. there can't be an in-between. Yeah, I think it just the, the simplest thing to do is to just abolish the change of tactics rule and mm. just get rid of it. It's Play on and, absurd. And then, you know, do your job after the meeting as a, as a, as a steward's like going through and, and trying to work out, you know, what, what was, if anything strange has happened. Mm. Nico, DK? Yeah, I'm... Yeah, I agree. The rules should be abolished. It's uh, yep, that's that's one. But I'm lucky in a way that uh, in the maidens, because the horses are still only in their first few starts or whatever, learning. they're still learning. So there's flexibility. So I mean, I had a race at uh, Geelong on Tuesday. Now the two things that were mapped to lead and be on speed, both probably overdid at the start before. So they were both grabbed hold of out of the barriers and went looking for cover, and then got shuffled back way. But further back than anyone thought they'd be. But you can see what they're doing. They're only third start, fourth start. The trainers, you know, well, they're desperate to get their horses to settle. We all know that. That's why there's so many soft tempos in Victoria. But especially when they're lightly raced horses, they're trying to educate them. And that's very important. They try and settle for the first half of the race. So it ended up being a complete walk the race, but where I didn't think it was going to. But I don't have a problem with it. There was no change of tactics, but I can see why it happened. So, uh, look, I, there wouldn't be – I don't think it would have been one occasion where – I've backed a horse because I'm betting in early markets and then the change of tactics come through so it's going back um, and I'm going, oh, shit, oh, no, I wish I wasn't on this. Oh, that, that, that's never happened. And I'm already on things that I think, oh, shit, that'll be more forward today and it'll come through more forward. And I'm, I'm already on it because I already think it'll happen. So they're just, you know, announcing it and then I think, oh, good, at least they're on the trainer and jockey are on the same page. So I get more confident. But I'm betting a day before and and they're allowed to do it up till 30 minutes before the race, I think, so... You know, but as I said, it's um, I just I don't I don't even worry about it anymore. So I think the the rule should go as well. Yeah, I don't have any issues with the rule as long as it's a rule. Like if you're a rule, surely you got to enforce it. It's just I think the enforcing just isn't right. been good enough recently. But but how do you enforce so that one there? How do you enforce that? Like it's it's pretty. They easily... ask a question and then, yeah. And well, that's... I think you just got to dig deeper and do more like more research. It seems Go like back the two races. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Check check the betting of. The start before and the start before that, because that's that's where the abnormality of the pattern is. It's okay. Well, why why was this horse dragged back the last two mm. starts? It, well, and what's the reason behind that? Like mm. a lot of trainers give conditioning runs and more so for the Melbourne Cups and that. But like, do we really want horses just out there for exercise? There's a million jump outs. There's a, all these like there's a million trials, and and it does seem like a, a, a at the up until Saturday it had been ducking and weaving the Sydney Cup handicap and just we'll, just we'll ticking like along. Yeah, well, that's yeah. what we're getting at. Mm. Yeah. But going from back to midfield mm. is not a change of tactics. Now, that's what that horse was supposed to be there. It was supposed to be from out the back. You know, as I'm, oh, we're out the back today. We're just going to go to midfield. Rolling forward is a change of tactics or forward of midfield. So we want to be up there. Now, that horse was supposed to, to me, it looked like it was trying to slot in midfield. So I'm just, I'm just by the way it happened, and Jay Ford said, oh, stuff getting caught wide. I might as well roll to the front. But so, you know. It's, uh, yeah, it's a funny one, isn't it? But um, another, another little, I think punters just want a fair go. And, uh, Another confusing thing, and this would be probably for new players, the Star Kingdom at Rose Hill on uh, Saturday. You've got uh, a horse right in the market, Mawatai. It's $2.60 oh. at uh, Sportsbet, three seventy dollars Gravina. And then you've got Sportsbet operating at 122%. <sighs> you've got Top Sport operating at 158%. So this whole scratchings and 
pricing runners in and out. This is um, I, I just don't understand how they can let this. Hey, middle of the year is it? Yep, yep. Six. I've already I've squared, I've squared it as well. Middle of the year. It's grubby tactics. It's what are they going to do? Absolutely grubby the tactics. You, huh? They're going to uniform the scratchings, or what's the change? Well, yeah. What's how? How's it going to pan out, DK? Oh, well, I just scratchings say sports, in yeah, Everyone's going to be the same. I think uh, they're going to be in in the du- scratchings for deductions and uniform uniform. Sorry, deductions for scratchings. Uniform can't do what sports better doing and betting um, emergencies with 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 deductions. It's good. Like, they're, they're bet- it's just ridiculous. I mean, they're poor customers like that. You know, back in a moment, as I've said, I've explained it before. You know, they just want to know what they're on their ticket and get paid their ticket. You know, most of the time, as often as you can, just pay what's on the ticket or what they've bet. The more more deductions you take, the more the worse it is. It's two, a grubby. Two mates it's... take six dollars. One gets three dollars twenty, and after scratchings, one gets four dollars eighty, yeah. and they're scratching their head. Yeah, yeah they don't know why. Yeah, yeah it's well, it's just grubby tactics. They look like they're top odds, and they're not exactly it's, spot on. It's shifty as. Yeah, mm. so, uh, don't like middle, it. middle of the year. We've got to wait till. Mm. It's uh, it's good uh, to get that mail. Anyway, something that uh, went a bit awry for me was uh, Shelby sixty six. I said uh, last week that I'd do the show in my undies, and you can see him, Johnny Walters, and you can see him on here. I'll, I'll spare mm. everyone me uh, taking my shirt off because I'd be uh, it'd be just so white and bright and glary. But so, I'm going to do the whole show through, right? in my manscape undies. Run me through why sure. I'm the one who's had to pay the price. Looking at you in your undies the whole time, <laughs> no, I... Shelby got out. Well, I said if he if he won the galaxy, I thought it was, I thought he'd be getting dizzy the amount of times he got backed up. And is, is in next thing you know, he, he's he, not, is he? He's no, not. I don't know. Nah. They he, should have run him down in there against bloody uh, down at Mooney Valley or something. They should have seen if he can travel as well. <laughs> he's going to the TJ next week. I think they're yeah. paying fifty thousand late entry fee to get in. So I cop the sponsor. I'll probably trial him on Monday just to give him a tick over, and then uh, and then he'll be ready for Saturday again. So, yeah, I'm going to do the whole... They, did, they didn't have the cash because the prize money doesn't get paid for a month or two, does it, Walt? So they've, some bloke, they've well, had to get a, they're going to get a white knight. They're going to pay the 50 for him. Mm. He actually, he probably hasn't been paid for all his weeks. <laughs> He's probably three or four weeks behind. There's going to be a big be. couple of checks coming. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fat when it uh, when it lobs. But uh, we've been inspired. We're going to back up uh, Britannicus uh, maybe tomorrow. So he he got beaten last, last oh, week. Talking... Who, who had Britannicus to start with? Oh, the brutal beat. Yeah, had the race. Johnny call. Thompson? Yeah, he used to have it. I was talking to Gerald maybe yesterday about yeah. Britannicus. You're telling me, and yeah, and then, yeah, interesting. Mm. Just telling me a few yeah. interesting stories. Anyway, so uh, the Manscaped undies are on. You can get yours at home 20% off if you type in Little Birdie, the Weed Whacker, and the Lawnmower. I was going to do the whole Tour de France shave down so Johnny could have a good look at my uh, shape, nice shaved yeah. legs, but uh, Alana talked me out of it, my partner. Why? Well, I don't know. Like the we could go, we could go off the cuff here. We could go off the cuff. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, Manscaped, get around it. I absolutely uh, love their shavers and their razors and uh, in the briefs because uh, Shelby 66 won. All right, Nico's going to have a look at uh, Morning and Cup Day and we're going to talk about that, but uh, Mooney Valley are going to pre- preview a couple of races there. The William Reed on Friday night. It's going to be a cracker. We've got Johnny Walter talking tanker and the two-year-old race. Uh, Mug Punny, he's got the South jersey back on after the weirdest game on the planet, Storm versus South. It was a tail. I stopped watching it at half time. Yeah. Well, and then I said to someone, oh, don't worry, weird. we'll be right when Latrell comes back. He was out there. I didn't even realise. <laughs> so I'm going really well. Yeah, it uh, all backfired still, though, for the Bunnies. Uh, top sports team. Is, uh, and just on the uh, last week's show, Terry Layton, he tipped uh, three winners all off the map. Amelia's Jewel left the building, son of God. They all, uh, it's a nice all saluted. So. Like, I think it did set. That's easy to say, but um, like, we would love to see it come east and, and line up. It's, it's a good horse. Mm, some crazy stuff over in Perth happening, and hopefully they can start transferring more horses over to the eastern states. We've got Mitch Beer to talk Albury Gold Cup Carnival after this break. First up to talk Albury Gold Cup Carnival is Mitch Beer, leading trainer there. How are you, Mitch? Very well, guys. Very well. Mate, uh, I'm not sure what's happening uh, down at Albury. Is there bushfires or there's a bit of a haze in your house? Have you been burning the snags over Brecky? No. Um, Saturday night, I uh, ventured to one of my staff's 21st, uh, woke up with a, a stamp on my uh, wrist and a uh, smashed iPhone. Um, no idea what's happened, but um, hopefully something can get the cash today and I can get it fi- fixed next week. Uh, what about the uh, siesta? Is that still a bit of a uh, a favourite of the, the locals there at Albury? You've got the um, the weird sort of Playboy Mansion type cave and the pool scenario. You've got the buffet. Bit of a weekender there, was it? 
sounds like you're speaking from uh, experience and not from photos on, on booking.com. Well, yeah, I went to school, at, uh, high, high school in Albury, and we used to go down to the siesta, but uh, it's a bit of a mecca. It's a bit of a tourist attraction in Albury. Have you been, Johnny Walton? Mate, I've been through there once, and it was a long drive, and we went from Newcastle, Sydney, Sydney straight through to play golf at Yarrawonga. And to this day, I'm not sure if I saw a woman wearing, driving a, a push bike in her underwear at three in the morning riding along the road or whether I was like having a Ghostbusters moment. I've, uh, I've only driven through Albury. No, her name's Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> Which is quite familiar. She was on her way to the stables. Mitch, uh, I matched, you got to, uh, I matched you got to... with her on Bumble last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going in those sort of stakes? It's... Uh... Lean, lean pickings at the moment? Uh, mate, uh, i tell you what. If you take my race in New South Wales strike rate and divide it by 14, uh, that's about <laughs> as good as I'm going on the apps. DK, I, uh, I tuned into the Tinder swindle yes. last night. I'll tell you what, Mitch, you might have to just uh, go down that sort of line. He's an absolute operator. Think, Scooty, that how about that? I couldn't get through the show. I, I might go down another angle and just be like, oh, I'm just waiting for English to pay me out for one on I sold on digital if you could just... Let me 60 to next weekend. <laughs> Get us, bye. Who are you going to pose as, though? The son of who? Uh, nah, yeah, I'm pretty cactus there. Cody Morgan's brother or something? What are you going <laughs> to... Yeah. Wait, that's very offensive, actually. That's uh, that's very harsh, being Cody. Hey, Luke's, a, Luke's a champion. Luke's a champion. Oh, so I did see a photo. I think Steph Grantella, someone put up a photo yesterday. I wish we had it. Uh, Mitch, are you... You're a pretty dapper young man there. You're looking pretty sharp. How long ago was that? Oh, what about... Don't bring that up. That was... <laughs> can't that, do that. Too that, deep. that that's, they yeah, should, he did look good there. That was... They should put that out as... as, as high school should should do it before and after. It's like the, kind of like the, <laughs> the faces of meth, but in a racing point of view. Like, you know, the before, the before and after. Like, don't get involved in horses and punking kids. This is what can happen to you. <laughs> Oh, dear, yeah. I, I didn't want to put it up there. I couldn't do it to you, Mitch. But uh, let's talk racing. And on Friday, it's uh, the Albury Gold Cup and the Flat Knacker. But uh, we love Benchmark 58s. And you've got the favourite here, Hardware Lane. Uh, odds courtesy of top spot here, 290 into 270. Someone's nibbled it. No jockey listed, which uh, makes me a little yeah, bit nervous. That's a worry. That's a worry. This horse, a bit, bit of a worry. And uh, Miss Furby is the second in the market, 750. Uh, Euro, say, $8. Chairman's Choice, 950. Ten dollars stand to attention, um, and you've got another one, uh, the Wyvern, or the uh, I don't know how to say that one. Ten dollars, and then uh, win some May. Ten dollars, and then uh, much, much better. The rest. We're gonna have a look at uh, Hardware Lane last start, Mitch, and talk us through this one. The uh, the red with the uh, or the red V, the big baldy face, and the blue. Yeah, I'll just shut my eyes and take my AirPods out for the next twenty seconds because uh, it's not a pretty watch when they're a dollar forty. Remember the one you're, 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 yeah, yours. he's supposed to be the one giving <laughs> no, the others wind burn. What's happened here? <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Thank, thanks, boys. Yeah. Why don't go back to the top of the straight and we'll just go through it again. <laughs> <laughs> so that was over a thousand. How's it going to go on the 1175 at Albury uh, on Friday? I think, I think he's as good a horse I've ever had. Um, he's uh, He's got couple of little niggling things that we're on top of now. Um, he's had the one run here at Aubrey over 11.75. He, you know, won, won by about seven or eight lengths and bolted in. Just being the second day of the carnival, I'm just holding off. I hope they just put a little bit of water on the track tonight. Um, if they don't, he won't run. Um, uh, but if uh, if we're in that four range, I just don't want to be ending up on a good three with him late tomorrow afternoon on a hot day. Um, he was disappointing first up, and wherever he goes, he'll bounce back from that. Um, but I just don't want to run him on a quite a firm track tomorrow. Mm, so, dear, yeah, the wide draw doesn't put you off. Are you, uh, you... Mitch, about the wide draw there, and and just wide draws that Albury track. Just just while you're there, Mitch, we we backed one today from the outside barrier at Albury, which I'm not too fussed about. But is there any intricacies or uh, wide draws or stuff that you yes or no at Albury track? You got you know, I tell you how good the wide draws are at Albury. I had two runners here at the last meeting. Uh, one was odds on and one was about uh, $11, $12. And me and a mate had $1,000, the double. I got to the races and they said the the shoots are heavy 12. So we're going to start them from the corner on the 11.75 and mine are drawn 13. Uh, and it ended up flying the lids leading, getting beat the last stride. And the second one trotted in by four. 
um, and yeah, it cost us about eighteen. So uh, the wide draws yeah. are just beautiful here at Albury. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully the shoot's not a heavy twelve today, and they'll be starting from it. But um, from that from that eleven seventy five shoot, it's it's not too bad. Um, yeah, I think that it's it's one corner. Um, you know, from a trainer's point of view, it's a good excuse if they get beat. From a punter's point of view, it, if they draw wide they, and get beat, they just weren't good enough. DK, uh, you knocked Mitch off the other day. Oh, hang on. What's that? Oh, here we go. Where at? At Corowa. Daily heads. Absolutely bolted yeah, hang on. in. What? He knocked Mitch off at Corowa, <laughs> given his daily head. <laughs> With no pants on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I see uh, Daily Heads is in there at $31, but I'm absolutely sick because uh, Mitch had Honor the Legend in the same race, yeah. and I was, asl- I was asleep at the wheel. I don't know where I was. Yeah. Uh, I, I, put, I, put the, I put the pen through that Honor the Legend. It was, yeah, well, guess uh, what? One thing I he know, backed what... it up a week later at Queanbeyan, and it won. It must have drawn back. Is it... You've got to draw... One thing I know about, I don't know a lot about the racing up there. I know at Corowa, you've got to draw well and be up there and... On a legend, I didn't think it was going to be up there in that race, so I, was, I thought Daily Heads would be. But oh, I backed up on one next art scooty. Mm, so a little hat tip to Mitch, and I'm just kicking myself that uh, I didn't see it in. So not many people do look at Queen Bee and just, uh, <laughs> just you know looking. No, up I'm not, not that. I'm very sick, but I'm not quite yeah. that sick. But I'm sick that I missed it, Mitch. You've got to go to Sky 2 and then hit that red button and then scroll <laughs> down four channels uh, <laughs> to get Queen Bee on a. Uh, Oh, it's like the Al Jazeera news. You know, you, you know you've scrolled too. You know you've scrolled too far. You got to go back, and start working back down. But it's the only channel Walt watches. Oh mate, it's the only channel you're allowed to watch. Queen Bee Ann is one place where <laughs> Queen Bee Ann form is Queen Bee Ann form is Queen Bee. It travels nowhere. It travels nowhere, <laughs> mate. You got to. I know Tony Golan doesn't take any there, but give us a break. <laughs> Managed, she started out in the battlers. You know, we had to go through the ranks. We had to go through the ranks. All right. At, what, at Albury Gold Cup, you haven't got a run. I see it's uh, it's an interesting little field. It's more or a yeah, Johnny Walter race with uh, Harmony Rose from Mark Newnham. I do have What's a up? runner. But obviously, you, obviously you've given it such, uh, <laughs> such a chance that you've factored it in. Um, but I actually do have a runner. It's got Queen <laughs> for Mulligan, Sorry. 80 to 1. 80 to 1. <laughs> Grasshoppers on it, chasing line. I, I I didn't come on here thinking that you know <laughs> this would be a you know delightful and treated like Chris Waller, but I didn't think I'd come on here and get kicked in the nuts. <laughs> you don't want to be treated like Chris Waller is on this channel. Let me tell you. <laughs> hey, this is just, uh, so so Mitch, uh, you've got one in the cup that's hopeless. What do you think, Mitch? <laughs> yeah. Have you seen any trotting and cantering around in front of your yeah. yard that uh, might have hope that you're right? Any any interstate trainers <laughs> staying with you that like theirs over the carnival? Oh. Yeah, good question. <laughs> good question. Hey, why are you there? I reckon I reckon the big fella. I reckon um, the big man from Sydney, Bjorn's got the winner of the cup. Uh, Maurice is my dad. I reckon uh, I reckon that that'll be one I'll be launching into at the Calcutta tonight. There we go. Mm. There we go. Interesting. Is he in a, is he in a run? It'll run because it's chasing a firm track. It's just uh, drawn the widest of the. Speed with big dad Brocky Ryan, and he's not a bit of a, he's, he doesn't like leading too much Brocky. So, yeah, you might want to get out there and give him a couple of strikes of the whip yourself to get him going. No, another mate of yours, Walter. Which one? Oh, Bjorn? No, no. no. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. He's going to throw a Bjorn story in there. Hang on. No, nah, I've got none. No, none for none public anyway. <laughs> uh, no, I reckon I reckon he wins a cup. Um, I want to see if you can be three and a half lengths uh, off Animo, and then yeah, go down running strong in that mile out to two thousand. Those Maurices, when they get to a trip, they tend to find another leg. So um, yeah, I think that, that's the one we'll be uh, running eleventh to tomorrow. <laughs> yours run, yeah. Yours run a drum nut, not quite. I, uh, I own it, and I did my sums, and I thought it can't win three and a half running in the Adrian Ledger over twenty four, and there's only going to be ten runners. So, um, you know, pretty much, if I buy something at Calcutta tonight, and it makes it to the barriers tomorrow, um, I've covered all outlays. <laughs> you got about four that. horses on the six day back up there from not finishing the course. Uh... Well, I'll tell you what. The the cow cutter will be interesting anyway. I'll tell you what. I've got a horse running today called Wise Dragon uh, in the 58 mile. And providing he doesn't win because it'll make him ineligible, uh, he'll be going around tomorrow. 
Who did someone did the two day backup? Oh, what's he? Your man Kavanagh, Sammy mm. Kavanagh did the two day backup the other day. Oh, yeah, sure. Gary Harley went up after about, him. It was off a track record or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was a bit of total Gary time. Harley and him had a, had a dust up <laughs> in, the, in the interview before the race. It was great viewing. Would you take Gaz on? Oh, mate, he'd take a bite out of you. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't get between him and a big Mac. I can assure you. <laughs> Oh, the other interesting runner that you've got uh, tomorrow is in a flat knacker. Let's have a look at the market, courtesy of Top Sport. And Boss, La- Boss Lady Rocks, uh, $3 favourite. Nikki Song, four forty. Luna Hero, $7. Proud Mia, seven fifty. Moscon, 10 And uh, Haralbin is 16 Mount Midi, 17 And you've got a runner here, Bulletin, uh, 21 into 19 Let's have a look at its last start. This is an XK Water. Queen being cup field, that, that sort of field. XK Water Horse Horse. Here and it's in the uh, baldy face. He must just buy all the baldy face horses. Blue with the yellow cap, and it's just sort of dropping out here. But uh... oh, oh, geez, that was, that was riveting footage. Out. <laughs> is this first start for you? Is it, this I is just, a recent purchase. We tell the truth. We'll tell the truth on this show. It's got a lot bigger story than that. This is this is an import from the US who was a good juvenile Hang or something, on. and then. DK's going to dissect it. You've uh, you you done that. Yeah. You've got a bit of the Breeders Cup juvenile form up your sleeve, DK. Gay had, Gay had like five preps at it and got one run of prep out of every prep. So see what, see what, see what Mitch thinks, what he can do I'd with it. It's shown a lot. It, it's shown plenty. Like they've always, they've fallen into it a few times. So it will be interesting to see what the great man can do with this horse. See, someone does their research on this program. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he was a Breeders Cup juvenile winner. Um, he's there you a, go. A, just short shy of a million dollars. He's he, he won his first three in America, won a Breeders' Cup juvenile, and he's done like the reverse Shelby sixty six, and he's ended up you know go, working his way down to Aubrey to a flat knacker. <laughs> but um, I, I really like the horse. I he, he's a very different sort of sprinter. He's light. He's lightly framed, uh, and he and he takes no work. Um, I think that city environment wouldn't have suited him at all. And um, Poor Gay, Gay, they don't like work. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, Puts them on the treadmill so they can have a sleep. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I'll stay out of that one. But um, you know, he's he's been he's been doing just. We've got a big dam here that we swim him in, and he's just been swimming and trotting, swimming and trotting. And um, I just gave him one little jump out here, and I put four or five my other horses in it, and um, he went outstanding. So I really like the horse. I, I can't really fall into him on his um, on his form, but. Um, for what I've seen of him, we've done very, very minimal fast work, and he'll be like a cage lion going on the gates tomorrow. He, he's ready to let rip. What about uh, you, Nico? Boss Lady Rocks, or is any uh, dangers here? Nikki's song. I'll tell you uh, what. Johnny- this Mount Midi down with what fifty-two kilos, probably the apprentice after the claim. It is a dead set nine hundred meter horse, so um, I think he'll give a big side on speed if you're looking for that. But you know, if there's a swoop of Bolton, uh, might be the horse you're looking at late. It's a flat knacker, so you know they're going to go pretty quick, but. Uh, Mount Midi, uh, I think he's actually going pretty well this prep, but um, just probably was looking for this race. So I think with 52, he might give a big side at 20s or around that sort of price. But now I've had a good look at Albury. I thought the cup might sort of throw up a bit better of a race, but I see Harmony Rose's favourite there after getting beat by the length of the straight last tight at uh, Randwick. So I don't know I thought it was a bit of an underwhelming carnival compared to years before, oh. but hopefully a few winners. <laughs> I'll just stick the boots Nasty. in even more. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Just, just wanted to finish off hasn't finished the course this prep. It's... <laughs> It's like five dollars as well. It has. It's had three runs and hasn't finished the course. So it's uh, yeah. I think uh, Mitchie might be onto the right horse there. Oh, Maurice. I I tell you that flat knacker. A lot of you know, it, it's full of horses that don't see out a thousand, and it's won by horses that are uh, proven over a bit further than a thousand that can get back and just get out and and run over a top of a hot speed. So I think for punters out there, just be careful falling into dead set squibs because they just set it up for something up the back. Oh, well, you can get $30 to double Maurice's my dad into bullet in a slot, so can't go wrong what there. Slot? What are you don't believe in me? Hey? You don't believe in me? No, hold, just conservative. Oh, in here, mate. Just well, you can get $123, so we'll have something on the, uh, the, uh, the, what the win-win the double. What price daily double? Yeah, well, that's sort of saying. Oh, oh, is that 123 the double? Yeah. Win-win. Win-win. That's all right. Win-win. <laughs> I've only I've only had I've only had one bet so far, and I took the twenty threes about bulletin early. Um, yeah. So I think you know, take that as you will, punish. You might want to wind it out come the last uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Interesting uh, synthetic hoof filler, first time off, tongue tie again, and earmuffs off. This bulletin, mate. There's no calming down. 
How far did Gay have it racing over? Uh, 1,100, 11, I think. Okay. Beautiful. Perfect. Yeah, but uh, no, the big, big bulletin's ready to go. But uh, no, anyway, we're, we're pumped. The, the two days of the carnival here, um, we'll be doing this live from Aubrey next year, no doubt, live from the Siesta poolside. Can do. Uh, Can do. Bit of a build know, up. In our little little birdie uh, budgie smugglers, we'll all be there <laughs> by poolside by the CS. There'll be a, a sight for sore eyes. Fantastic, and uh, we'll take you up on that, Mitch. Hundred percent. We're not going to uh, preview Mooney Valley or Sydney. We've run out of time for the whole show. <laughs> just this segment's just done us. Hopefully, you can find a winner, Aubrey Car- Carnival, and hope you get a couple too, Mitch. But uh, all seriousness, if you uh, if you want to train around the River Arena, he's absolutely on fire, and a barrel laughs as well. He's uh, his content's just fantastic. Well, that's, what, that's what racing should be about: having fun hey, and having a bit if, of fun. If, if you're not having fun with a horse with him, even if it's running last, I think. Uh, you know, if you, uh, that's the key. Well, that's what it's all about. Well, let's ruin let's let's ruin Mitch's life, and we'll send him one, and you can be in it as well while, when you're yeah, allowed to. Send him Jabbar. I'll send him Jabbar. <laughs> yeah, just, or just play that play that Hardware Lane replay on the, as a segue out again, just for a further kick in the nuts. Have you have you, have you laid your eyes on a thing called uh, the boys at the Footy Club? Just just purchased one with Anthony Manton the other day. A buzz and buzz and something. Buzz and buzz. Joe. Yeah, have you, laid, Joe. have you laid eyes on yeah. it yet? Yeah, yeah, he's arrived. He's, he's been here for about four or five days, so I think I've seen him once or twice floating around the stables. We've got a few here at the moment. But, uh, no, he's all right. He's come down. Um, he's ready to run, so we'll just sort of let him integrate into the system. And, um, yeah, they're not bad, those fellas. They can, there's been a couple there where I've sort of thought, oh, I don't know what we can do with this. But um, they buy the right ones for not much money, and they can um, they can get a result. That's it. Oh, he's good. That's all right, because uh, Mitch, Mitch is a good Avondale Heights. I think he uh, grew up in the Heights, one of the great suburbs of Melbourne. Mitch is an Avondale Heights boy, so uh, I think we'll uh, the footy club there jumping in with a horse for him. So it um, should be a bit of fun. Mate, it's great, great cool. to be supported. I actually I haven't told him yet, but I played a couple of seasons for the East Kill or Cougars, so oh, I don't know no. how that's going to go down. I don't <laughs> know how are, that's going to go down. Yeah, generally, don't mate, you keep, keep that grave But I am a proud, I'm a, I'm a proud EDFL you know, product. I think they like to call me a product. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I've just ended up in in a different sport. Outstanding stuff. All right. Good luck over the carnival, Mitch, and uh, good luck at the Calcutta tonight. Cheers, legends. Thank you. Tell you what, we love him because he's a punter and he's uh, he's doing really well in the training ranks. He's uh, he's very yeah, funny. He's, he's absolutely light, dominating now the Riverina. We uh, we can't uh, can't do any ads, but Top Sport are betting on uh, all the races at Albury early, so make sure you pick them off in early markets. They've been. Doing it the right way for the last 35 to 40 years, Lloyd and Tristan. And the guys up at Top Sport here at the Gold Coast, uh, they do a fantastic job. Okay, let's uh, let's get keep going and we'll go straight into uh, Mooney Valley tomorrow night. And it's uh, Group 1 William Reed night. And the race and market that we're going to have a look at here has Marabi installed as a $1.65 favourite. It's the first time I've seen the prices here. That is absolutely crazy. The Astrologist, $14. Kemmel Passer, $15. Inferno, $15. Generation, $16. September Run, $18. Jonker, $20. And General Bow, $26. Marine, $1. Uh, Waltz Horse, probably stand out, $26. Trekking, $31. Oops, Snapper, $41. Yeah. I keep uh, turning on the Manscaped Razor here. But uh, Marabi, we won't show that replay. It won the Oakland Plate. It uh, was a bit leaderish that day and uh, just run them absolutely ragged. The replay you've got here is the Inferno uh, running second in the Moya, Nico. Yeah, this was a big run this night. Um, I think he's going to need similar. If the track's playing real on speed, it probably takes him out of play. But if he can run on like he could on this night, I think he comes into the game. He's back last in the pink, uh, the Cliff Brown colours there and really used a lot of uh, his energy just to get into this race and then sort of was just felt it a bit late. He probably loomed up like he was going to win and then he couldn't get past Wild Ruler, who did start, I think, third favourite against Mirage with the Oakley Plate. So it's easily tieable. Um, this is going back to the spring. He's had one first up run here in the Lightning where he nearly fell, so completely forgive that. Um, the run was actually quite good if you sort of look at his four of the two split of the – he was actually the sixth fastest of the meeting, so he actually put in there. Um, he's been back to the jump outs at Woolamai. He went down there, had a spin around, was good, and then his most recent jump out at Balnaring, where I thought was very good. So I think if you can run on, he's the second best horse in this race. His form overseas in Singapore, was he was the best horse there. He's unbeaten second up. He's obviously been set for – this race, um, the two jump outs since Cliff Brown, he knows this horse, and when he's flying at the jump outs, he usually runs well. So I thought at sort of $15, look, Marabi's going to be hard to beat, but, you know, he took 260 last start, and I think in a setup which was, you know, a better setup for her than here, I think she is slightly vulnerable here with the 1,200 metres and a few horses that could take her out in front. 
a couple of old goldings, a couple of bullies there. It's going to be a tough test for her. I wouldn't really want to step in a dollar sixty. I can still see her winning, but she can win without me at that price. I thought the Inferno. If you can run on, I'd be happy to bet up the place there. That's sort of 360, 350. Track, track lover, loves the valley. And the reason it uh, got Polex last start was I expected it at a big price in the Lightning. So that's the great reason to back it next start. It did. I was speaking, listening to Cliff Brown. He did say it pulled up a bit grubby, which you would there. It lost, had its legs taken from underneath it. And it just the, with the recovery and that the new market was going to come up too quick. Too quick. So he just said, come back, jump out. We'll go for this race here because it love, looks to love Mooney Valley. So uh, you're right, but just the astrologist there, it's dual accepted, isn't it? I think it's you know yeah, he's in the Hariba as the well. as well. So mm, we might uh, talk about that race uh, a little bit later on. Let's skip through to the Alexander Stakes. Nico's found a roughie here, race eight. Uh, so you see, he's come up favourite here, three fifty at Top Sport. Uh, Ancient Girl from Clint McDonald last start winner four sixty. Bonds of Perla six dollars. Daisy's six fifty. Fortunate Kiss ten. Uh, Maracana is eleven. Dusa is twelve. Always on my mind is eighteen. In from twenty. And that's a replay we're going to have a look at at Sandown, Nico. Yeah, just embracing the pain here. I thought we were, uh, we were on the Mick Price horse and we we're on her. And I thought we were home at sort of a few stages in the straight here. But anyway, we move on. Um, she gets the blinkers on on Friday night. She had the winkers on here. As you can see, she's sort of across heels there in the Arrowfield colours. Once she gets out, she really has a crack at them late. I think this might be the best lead-in run. Like, this was a real fast mile. A lot of these are coming through like slowly run 1,400 meter races or races that just, you know, ancient girl just went to the front and kept going at Adelaide. This was a real strong mile. The third horse, um, Chateau Noir or something like Chateau that. Chateau Nine. Yeah, he, he ran second at Flemington in another <clears throat> really high rating race. So I think she can elevate off that again and run a big race here. Her pack and a maiden win, it wasn't that much different to so you see. Sectionally, they both come home around sort of three lengths above on the punting form data relative to the class at last 600. So... Look, I didn't think there was that much between them, and she's just kind of come through a different line of form. I know DK, you're probably you're all over her watching that trial and then that big win on debut where she was smashing the betting. It was uh, yeah, something to see. And then I, 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 you know, with first starters, I sort of go and investigate and look at the breeding. She's um, now this she's very well bred, so she's re, she's a filly retained by Arrowfield. Her mother, it was stay with me, who won a Group One Thousand Guineas, and her granddam's Miss Finland. So this is black type blinkers on. First time, this is kitchen sink job, you know, trying to get the black type, you know. And um, what I just saw, because she was out, she was she was back and then ran on those sectionals first start. And then she's copped the pressure fast 1600. It's a great base, you know, that she's been able to go slow pace and fast pace and and at the trip. So she's got the, some of these fillies are not in, be that strong at 1600. She's going to be strong at 1600. I think if she has any genuine ability, like she's shown us so far, yeah, you're probably a city horse. If she's a group class horse, she's going to show it here, yeah. I think. Yeah, it's only a third time to the races, but she's doing all the right things. But this is a bit of a race. This oh, is a yeah. bit of a race. There's a very a lot of progressive fillies here. So they, and these because there's another 1600 meter listed race in Adelaide on Saturday, the Clear Lindop, which the sort of tier below, just below this lot, and Kieran Maher and Mick Price are taking things over there. Um, and so this side, these are probably the better lot because this is Group Three. But there's, I mean, you know, I mean, we know so you see, um, do sir daisies. I mean, there's, there's some, some nice fillies here. But I'll say Zara, the only thing really, Zara's sticking with Daisy, so that must be – you might have had to make a commitment for the down the track, whatever she runs in, maybe one of the Oaks or something like that. So I'd assume that all go to South Australia, like mm. the Australasian Oaks, who's a group mm. one over 2,000 metres. Um, I'd imagine they're sort of all on that sort of path. No, Sydney but, probably comes up a bit too quick. No, some nice, there's some nice fillies there, I'll tell you. The second outsider, I just thought she was a big price. Yeah, big and it's price. a like I said, it's a kitchen sink job to – you're going to get – so you got to get everything thrown out of here to get the black type, you know. <clears throat> and uh, Nico, uh, he took uh, yesterday off at Sandown and uh, announced all his subs that he's going to do the uh, the quick backup. So he's going to do his yard uh, service via telegram for Mooney Valley on Friday night and then Mornington uh, down near his local area on the Saturday. So uh, you haven't missed out. So 25 bucks a week for all Nico's stuff or you can get a package for the rest of the Finn year if you'd like to purchase that. Let's have a quick look at uh, the Mornington Cup. We won't go through any replays. The market uh, with Top Sports Pondos, uh, Pondos, sorry, two fifty, uh, Crystal Pegasus, two ninety, Sacramento uh, six fifty, Defribble eight seven fifty, De Doos Dart eight dollars. Any uh, initial thoughts looking at that market? Uh, I guess it's the litmus test for a horse like uh, Crystal Pegasus. All the horses uh, looking to get the mm. Caulfield Cup. Yeah, again, I think a race sort of fell a bit flat, um, considering it's a golden ticket into the Caulfield Cup. Look, of what Ponders did the other day, he ran a really good figure there. 2,000 metres at Flemington, he started, what, favouring about Cummings. He started favouring in the Mooney Valley Cup. If 
you know, I think he's he showed last start he's in a pretty good spot this prep. His run first up in the blame, he was great. I think he's got more ability than Crystal Pegasus, but he does have to give him three and a half kilos, and Crystal Pegasus has won three on the trot. So, look, if I was going to be betting into the race, I'd probably be back in Pondus at sort of 250, but mm. there's a few other horses that do come into it. Defibrillate, he's going well enough to win, probably peaks your third up. Sacramento, Mornington, you do want to be up on speed a lot of the time. Gay Bot, like he might give a sight. Wasn't a race I was sort of too keen to bet into at the moment. I think probably early in the card for me looks the uh, the better races there at Mornington with a few angles. So hopefully uh, on the home track and find a few winners for the punters there on Saturday. Hmm. It's an interesting uh, card. Yeah, the astrologist is dual nom, so the Hariba's a tricky one to bet into. Superium, well, Mexicano, Signal Fox is an interesting one. Three trials set for this. Looks like it's chasing a dry track. Seven fifty. Um, Chassis, great again. Award winners in there. Uh, high tail off a disappointing. Run last time. I can give you something to cheer for there. That Sacramento, we're in the casino about what two years ago. Mm. Ado wants to sell it forty thousand. No worries. I said beautiful. Transfer the money. He's like, yeah, don't worry. I'll get a couple of my mates into it to get it going. And then I'm like, what, why would they want a horse going to Tamworth? He's like, no, no, I, I want to train it. I'm like, no, nah, mate. And I've got no interest in paying ten thousand a month to get a you know a horse trainer. I said I'd be going up north. He's like, well. Oh, well, can I have it back? Yeah, no worries. Seven races and half a million later. Thanks mm. very much, Sacramento. Just keep cheering for it. Yeah, seven of 22. <laughs> Beautiful Piero Canberra Cup winner. David Lilly. Actually, that and Monagal came out of that Canberra Cup, so the form's already been at least uh, backed up. Mm. Didn't miss it either. 14 in the $7, mm. Monagal. Mm. One of the few winners I've backed in the last month. <laughs> mm. A little, uh, yeah, anyway. So that's uh, that's the weekend. So Nico will be uh, covering Moody Valley and Mornington. Uh, so make sure you check that out. He's a big punning form man. So uh, big shout out to punningform.com to you. They're a sponsor of us, and uh, their stuff lives in the cloud, so you can't delete your notes. So uh, any comments or black book, it all just sits up there. So punningform.com to you is what you need to use. Let's just skip across Mitch Beer. He's just chewed us out for time. So uh, no mucking around now, but. Uh, Johnny Walter, the Rose Hill card, and just the weather in Sydney, it's just unrelenting. Mate. It's mate. it's a bit depre- It's starting to get a bit depressing. Imagine living there. I think at the Gold Coast, we went through a month of it. But geez, you get the flats when it just doesn't stop raining. And at it? least when it sort of dries out here pretty quick there, it's just it's stop, it just keeps coming and coming and coming. Doesn't really, every every morning I wake up to a message raining again, <laughs> raining again, raining again. But this card, oh my god, I mm. spent six or seven hours on it last night, driving myself insane, trying to find a winner in all of them, and then coming back this morning, dusting through them again, just trying to, it's just so hard, and especially with the uh, prevailing conditions, scratchings, everything to come, it's just... It's, just, it's a cupboard just job. Mad at the moment. Mm. All right, let's have a look at the race too, after saying all that, the Schweppes oh, Vessence. Huge confidence here, huge. 1,400, uh, two-year-old race here. Boyfriend's a favourite, 480. Miss Faberge, $7. Williamsburg, $7. El Padrino, seven fifty. Moco, 9 uh, double figures. The rest, the replay we're going to have a look at here is Boyfriend in the uh, Aquas Blue with the red cap. So, at least here, it has had every chance, which is the problem. A lot of these horses have, and the, and the form's pretty weak. And this race is not really a race I would have loved to go looking for a horse out of, but um, nice and solid getting up in distance. I think that horse in behind there, Show Court's one to be found wherever it ends up. But so Jardin was unlucky in the uh, in the Golden Slipper and a complete forgive. It's the one that comes down the outside with Boyfriend here and. <laughs> Just a horse that looks like it's desperate for 1,400. At least it's coming out of, you know, slipper lead-up form. Blink is going on, on on Saturday, fourth run in. It's a nice hard fit and should roll forward in the first four or five, I would say, over the 1,400 here and, and should be tough. I just I, I went through and tried to poke holes in all the other horses' form to at least try and, you know, match them up. And the only other horse that I thought was interesting, and it's probably short enough to match a latte coming out of a... Mm. A maiden at Canterbury years. where it got going late there, but it was sort of pace assisted and, and, and a maiden coming up to this grade. So I, I just thought sticking with the class and the blinkers, Gerald, and he's obviously targeted this race. I think from its first start, it's shown that it probably wants 1,400 a mile and, and this this race would have been uh, on his on his radar for a while. Mm. And Snitzel, so you know it's going to love the wet. And mm. uh, Matcha Latte is another Maurice. There's just so many... The yeah, is just bobbing it was through. a weird run its debut. I was sort of hoping it'd pop up in a maiden somewhere and be a good thing, but um, yeah, it's a scary horse in this race. Rebel Dane, eighty-eight hundred dollar service fee. Mate, I'm still not over Rebel Dane when it kicked back up the inside <laughs> and beat. Uh, what was it, Matty Dale's horse in the in the uh, Group One at Mooney Valley that night? I nearly jumped off the top of the grandstand. Rebel Dane. Fell swoop. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was good. That was good. That win was unbelievable. Fell that, swoop. Yeah, and that's uh, FL swoop. That's who it was, and that. Um, that that crew, Louis Mahalika and what are they called? Their bloodstock company. There, 
that Laurel, um, race Laurel Rebel Dane and they, they do a lot. They're, they're a good crew. Good crew. Right. Any thoughts, any code? Race two? No, nothing from me. Beautiful. All right, let's have a quick look at the tanker. Race seven. Due is 280 favorite. Spanish Mission, $4. Think it over 460 She's ideal, ten dollars. Uh, Stockman, fourteen dollars, and we'll just watch uh, Dewey just absolutely bolt in here, just uh, zip home. Nico, did you notice anything different from this horse? I guess the last time you saw it in Melbourne to now, from the uh, uh, I think that physical. might have been the first time I saw her from memory. But uh, I thought out of you know her thinking over Spanish Mission, I thought she may have been the one that may have been um, not needing this run, but might come on the best on for it. So. Given they're stepping up to 2,400 metres, I think she won't be empty off this. Uh, think it over. I, he might suit 2,400 metres, that horse. Just a big sort of grinding um, stayer, but it'd be hard to see him sort of beating her, given you'd think advantage to her over 2,400, for sure. You'd think Spanish Mission would be the only one that would be capable of turning the tables, I'd, I'd imagine. Not, I'm not looking to step into 240 due either, just quietly. It's just got, got an awkward draw and... There's no speed. If he sort of controlled the tempo a bit more and got rolling, it might hurt her sprint rather than that that, that race where they went a bit quick and they were all a bit vulnerable late to her turn of foot. It's um yeah, it's a bit of a watch race, isn't it? Mm. Funny things happen back to heavy, but um mm. yeah, she's proven she was a great run last time. Yeah, his, his decision's next up probably whether he steps up to a Sydney Cup quickly mm -hmm. on the backup or he uh, waits for a Queen Elizabeth or something like that. But I. Um, it'll be interesting to see which way he goes and hopefully she just continues on winning for JP. Group 1's knocking him up. That'd be nice. JP. No, I'm being are, are, you, are, you, are you bitter? Are no, you no, bitter? Not, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> it's good for you. He needs a horse, you know, to keep him going. He struggles with his weight and yeah. and, and it's a, a weight for age mare is a perfect horse for him because it'll keep racing for a while and, and he, you know, 57 kilos, perfect. And uh, hopefully like he, she does knock up half a dozen winners. Ed needs it as well, you know. The key's only just starting off his yeah. career. So good luck to them both. No bitterness. Promise you. He's proved the last month. Like he's just come <laughs> down here and dominated Melbourne. I think you're in a double and then what run on her in the Australian Cup. So he's really had a kick along there. Um Great House is right on track for the Sydney Cup. If you can get home and sort of run fifth or sixth here, uh, I think you could take twenty one bucks in the Sydney Cup for Great House. I think he's an amazing example of, of what confidence does. He could not ride a winner at about bloody wherever you want at the jump outs. He couldn't ride a winner anywhere, JP. Mm. He looked like he wanted to jump off every horse that he was sitting on. Now you look at him and he, every horse he jumps on, he you know, finds an extra length in, in in the finish. It's incredible what confidence does in racing. And no different for punters either. You just need that uh, one winner to just turn you back around and yeah. get on a roll. I'm sure. I'm sure that's how it goes. Well well I'm sure Mug Punner, that's what he'd be feeling. But uh, if you want more of Johnny stuff, racingwatch.com that are he uh, skirts around the edges of all city racing when it's not absolutely underwater. But uh, there, uh, the Discord channel uh, provides plenty of winners and uh, plenty of insights into life and golf <laughs> and all sorts of uh, weird and wonderful uh, action. There's, uh, there's plenty going on in there, so make sure you check that out. Now it's time for Mug's Moral. Hi, guys. Mug, Mug here with his Mug's Moral. The Mug is having a shocking run at the moment, but we all go through slumps like this. But as soon as we back that first winner, we go bang, 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 and back winners after winners. So this week, boys, we're going race two, Rose Hill, number three, Williamsburg. I, I was on this horse when it won its maiden at Newcastle. Oh, what a horse. This horse is looking for 1,400. It gets it this week. It's one in the wet. It was a very good run. At Warwick Farm, first its first start, won at Newcastle Maiden. It ran fourth in the Pago Pago in the Pango Pango. Looks ready, barrier six, it'll be off the pace. It looks ready to win boys. So the mugs moral this week is race two, number three, Williamsburg. Not a very interesting card this week. It's like this is like the quiet day of the carnival. Not many good races. A lot of lead-ups to the next two or three weeks at Randwick. So, boys, good luck. And what does the mug say when we find a winner? Go find your bookie. Good luck and be back next week for Doncaster Week. He, uh, he's, it looks like he's ditched the uh, the newsreader papal shuffle after uh, maybe a bit of feedback on the Twitter sphere. But uh, Britain Abdullah jumps off Williamsburg and jumps on Boyfriend. The informed gun. Obviously, Mug knows. He knows something. He knows. I, I yeah, I kind of saw it the other way, but only like as in Brenton jumping off to get on the right one rather than the other. But 
head uh, uh, there with the mugs always exciting. Mm, I love that. There'll be good, uh, good banter. Good banter. Good banter. All right, time for uh, top sports big bets. Uh, Rose Hill race eight, number five, Makalua, Makula. The thousand at uh, twenty six dollars here in the binary. That is dead set the hottest race I've ever seen. That horse of Van Dyke's coming down and. And a bunch of horses fangirl uh, hinged. Uh, there's some, like, there's about half a dozen really nice horses. I sort of had a look at its three Obviously, it ran a, got home nicely in that, that Melbourne race, and at least it brings a different form on. It's twenty six dollars. Can't knock it. Mm. And the next one is Chassis in the Hariba here, uh, five hundred at ten dollars. We've sort of touched upon that race. Looks like a uh, a few chances. Ma Eustace first up. M D. Mm, Mickey D. Hard to bet with confidence. Mickey D. At the moment. Nico? Yeah, it was uh, not good to us there last Saturday on uh, Cherry Tortoni when we looked to our bet up there. Yeah, and then what did he do? Oh, then what did he do? And then he come out and won on Pondus. Come out one on Pondus and so. got the thing home for the DK on Sunday and they put an MD here, thanks. That's good MD. I'll tell you what, he, he redeemed himself. He's, not until next week. Not until next he's week anyway. Ro- he's yeah. riding the All-Star Mile was very good on Pinstripe. I don't think that horse backed up, but he probably couldn't have rode it much better. Like He did have to come out and redeem himself, but... I've always find it like found him seriously hard to catch MD, but uh, Chassis is an interesting run up. First start for Mar Eustace, like it's had all its runs for John Price, right, and now yeah. they've just sent it elsewhere. So um, yeah, I don't know. I think ten dollars are kind of short there, but I haven't watched any jump outs. So maybe that's a few trials. He, he must be um, in. He must be just peeling back his training operation and going into more of the bloodstock. John Price maybe because pa- Paper Boy went to you know bench good and Chassis's gone there. So you could be right. Mm. Mm. And the other one here is uh, race five, number eight, Mirror Vision, 350 at $16. It's taking on Ana Visto and Kiss on all four cheeks. Good luck. Uh, hot race, that one. Those Good two luck. horses deep in the market are super, super hard to beat. Kiss on all four cheeks, not sure how it'll go on uh, the rain affected track, but uh, gee, Ana Visto was an impressive win. And Jamie Carr sticks with it. So fascinating to see what happens there. But uh, that is a wrap from us. And uh, make sure you check out Little Birdie Live. Head to the shop if you want uh, these boys' action. DK starting to find some form. And Nico will be there for the double Mooney Valley into mornings. And Racing Watch is for Walt. And uh, I'll be doing my best to uh, back a winner myself. And I can't wait for the Aubrey Cup Carnival. And uh, it was great to have you be on the show. But uh, we'll see you next week.